It's project time, and as summer is approaching, I bought a couple of solar lights today. These are the globes sold by Poundland. Uh, it's a dollar store in the UK where everything is roughly a pound. In this case, one pound fifty. Look at all the different prices. Two euros. I don't even know what that is. Uh, four bams, eight Polish nunus. It's got loads of different prices, right up to 700 huffs. Excellent. Lots of variety there. What else does it say? Oh, it's got lots of labels and instructions. The Curse of Europe. Lots of red tape. It gets worse, though. You open it up. There they've put in all the extra nonsensical, you know, don't throw it in the bin. Uh, we're justifying our existence government department paperwork. Lovely. So uh, let's put it in the bin, which uh, is what they requested. So here is the solar light. It's a classic one, it's quite a cheap one, and it produces a nice even glow within the globe. The globe passes, it's translucent enough to pass uh, the sunlight, particularly the infrared, which is needed by this, and uh, that hits this little solar panel, this little amorphous silicon solar panel. There's the LED, and there's the little uh, classic four-pin chip, a inductor, what is the inductor? Oh, that's quite high, 330... Uh, micro Henry, orange, orange, brown, that is very high. They're going for super uh, low intensity, long run time here with a tiny cell. Uh, but a surprisingly capable solar panel, so you can upgrade the cell if you want. So let's take a look at this. Well, let's turn it off. It's cold white at the moment. That's not great. Uh, let's take that LED out, noting that the negative connection of the battery is the negative connection of the LED. So I am going to flow some soda onto that. I'll zoom down for this. It's easy to hack your solar lights for different colours of lights. I do recommend having them turned off while you're doing it because uh, of the way uh, the LED is driven. It can actually kind of short things out if you do what I'm doing right now and bridge both the solar connections at once while you drag the LED out. Lovely. Now, let's get the excess solder off. This is where I could have been more organised and had uh, some desoldering wick handy. Desoldering wick. I prefer over the solder suction pump. Everybody has their own preference though. I like to take the desoldering wick and add just a little tiny bit of flux to it just because it makes it more potent. It doesn't take much because it is a wick, it just wicks along it. So place that onto those solder connections. I almost placed it onto the wrong solder connections. It's a very small cell, it's not going to do anything, although those cells are noted for exploding under extreme sunny conditions, which is why you can upgrade the cell. You can just replace it with, say, a AAA. I don't normally recommend soldering onto the end of cells, but uh, sometimes it is viable if you're very, very careful. Now, the LED I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in an ice blue LED. Why? It's because I have 1,000 of them and nothing better to do with them. Let me show you what a nice blue LED looks like and why I'm going to do it. Crinkle, crinkle. Here's my little LED comparer and I shall plug it in. It glows a very dull glow when it's off. And when I turn it on, it's a nice, bright, icy blue. And what it is, it's basically a blue chip with a little dusting of white phosphor, just barely, it's almost like a white LED, but with so little phosphor that it just makes a pastel blue. And it reminds me of Uranus. Fnar, fnar. Which uh, is, that planet is indeed uh, icy blue. So let's put it in, remembering the uh, polarity here. The, if you are taking this apart, a good clue, normally, is to look at the shape of a little anvil inside uh, the LED. The anvil is normally a negative. And then the long lead is the positive lead. I'm going to bring this out as long as far as possible, really, because uh, I, want, I want it out as far as possible. I want to stuff it right into the globe. So I've soldered one lead and I'm squaring it up and now I'm soldering the other lead. That's the modification done. Now this is where you have other options as well. Let me just crop these leads down. But you have the options at this point in time to make a few other modifications. This is now glowing icy blue at a low intensity. I'll show you afterwards in the dark. Um, you have an option now 
because you've got the cover off this, you can slabber it with either Vaseline or uh, nail varnish to try and make it waterproof. Also run some up the leads up to LED and also around the battery contacts and also see this little uh, chip here. Uh, run it up to the end of that chip as well. Anywhere that water could uh, build up. You might think this is sheltered from water. In reality, water gets in around the side of where it screws in. Uh, the moisture makes it evaporate. It condenses in the inside and then it drips down onto the circuit board. There is never any escaping water. It finds its way everywhere. Other options. The switch is one of the most likely things to fail. You can just bridge that you'll see that there are two pins linked together and one pin separate. You can just bridge them with solder uh, when you're ready to do so, and that will just turn it on all the time. Uh, and it's just saved because that switch will ultimately corrode. If you've had any fail, uh, lights fail, suspect the switch and also suspect the solar panel. The other thing you can do is over the top of the solar panel, you can put a bit of uh, clear tape. You get this ultraviolet resistant tape for garden use for repairing cloches and greenhouses putting over broken glass and stuff like that that's pretty good for these give it a wide coverage and then trim it to size of the knife just to leave a good edge and it will basically make it last a bit longer anything else you can do the inductor here the higher the value of the inductor, the lower the current through the LED. You can replace this 330 microhenry inductor with a 100 microhenry inductor and it will be a lot brighter. You can go right down to about 47 microhenry, but to be honest at that point, that's assuming you have lots and lots of sunlight. Uh, you may also want to change the cell for a bigger one so that it catches as much of the sun that's uh, gathered by the cell as possible. But anyway, once you've done all these things... I shall just tilt that over like that, and I shall stuff it back into its little holder. And I shall... Oh, it's not stuffing back into its holder square, because the switch... Okay, that's fine. And then angle that LED over. Don't worry about the LED shining on the solar panel, because the solar panel, sun versus the output of this miserable LED, is uh, not, not that great, so it's not really an issue. If I cover this over, it's going to light. It's lit. Right, tell you what, I shall uh, set this up. I shall put it back together now and uh, set it up and then show you what it looks like lit. It should look like, as I say, Uranus, which should be a nice, lovely, uh, greeny blue. So let's take a look at that. One moment, please. And there we have it. That's a nice colour. That is just like Uranus. It's a lovely, soft almost like cyan blue glow. I mean, the other option you have here, you can put two LEDs in series and then you can mix and match. You could have put a red LED and a blue LED in series to make a magenta. You could put a blue and green in series to make a, a cyan, or you can put a couple of red LEDs in for built-in redundancy and have a, a slightly higher output of just one colour. But there we have it. I would say that is a good result, would you not? So if you want to hack your solar lights, the world is your oyster. You can have any colour you like, and you can make them more rugged and so that they literally last more than the one season that they usually do. So there we go. That's a win. It's a great result.